Hey everyone, Rayo here, and today I wanted to make a quick guide regarding keybinds and some game settings to help improve your gameplay in Guild Wars 2. First thing that I wanted to mention is that keybinds should really just be appropriate for how you play. If you like the default keybinds, that's totally fine. If you like to completely flip the keybinds all over your keyboard, that's also fine. This will take some personal experience and time to set up, but once you get it set up, it will make your gameplay so much smoother. And today I wanted to give you some tips and pointers to keep in mind when you're remapping all of your keybinds, as well as go over some toggleable things in your settings to help make your gameplay smoother. Before we get started, I'd like to mention that I am a partner of ArenaNet, so if you'd like to start playing Guild Wars 2 for free, or if you would like to buy an expansion, you can use the links in my video description to start playing Guild Wars 2 today. These links are also sponsored by ArenaNet. I also stream over on Twitch on Sunday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday, so make sure to follow me over there and ask any questions that you may have. And of course, if you enjoy this video or find it helpful, make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Let's get into the video. Alright guys, so let's go ahead and start off with the settings. Just to keep in mind, I don't really have a script, so I'm going to be kind of going through the list and explaining different things as to why I have things the way they are as I come across them. So it might be a little bit dragged on a little bit, so I apologize in advance. There are timestamps in the video description for this section as well. If you want to skip to the keybind section, you can skip to that now. A lot of these things are default. Things that I make sure that I toggle are thick party health bars, thick squad health bars, because what happens is when you're in combat, there's a lot of visual clutter in the Guild Wars 2. So you want to make sure that you can see if you, especially if you are playing support, this is mainly if you are playing like a healer or support or anything like that, you need to be able to see your party's health bars above their head because you're going to be focusing on what's going on in the center of your screen. Because if you look over to the left where the squad UI is, where the party UI is, it's going to take your attention off the center of your screen where everything is happening and you are going to be looking to the left side of your screen or the right wherever you have your party interface. So what you want to do is you want to make it as easy as you can on yourself to not divert your attention from where all the action is happening. I always make sure I have them showing as well, just because I always want to see them. Let's see, let's see, skill recharge. This is a very good one because when I use a skill, as you can see, it will put a number on the cooldown, which is very, very helpful. Very, very helpful. So I would definitely make sure you have the show skill recharge and show target health percentage. So whenever you have a target targeted, it'll put the percentage of their health in the center of the health bar. Pretty straightforward and self-explanatory, but it's very, very helpful. This is pretty much everything in this section. I have my camera settings a little bit different, but basically what I do here is I have my rotation speed a little bit slow because I move my, my mouse around a ton. So I'm making minor movements right now, but if I make these minor movements with my rotation speed all the way over here, I have this is way too fast for me. I have little control over this. I really don't need to be moving my camera that fast because it's too much for my brain to process. I'm not trying to make it sound like I'm like unintelligent or anything like that. It's just having too much information to process makes it harder to digest. That's pretty much just how it works. So I try and make sure I can keep things slower. And if I'm not used to it, I'm trying to train myself to process things at a more digestible rate. So um, that might be a little bit overage. That might be a little bit too much for that one thing, but that's kind of like what I keep in mind when I'm setting up my game settings. So rotation speed all the way to the left. Field of view, I keep it all the way to the right because when I am doing combat, you can see that I can view out very, very wide. So this will allow me to see everything happening. When I am actually in combat, I have my vertical position dead center, which is default. So I do my vertical position far at about like 60% and then my near at about 70%. This is totally up to preference. I like to kind of have it so I can see like in PVE, I want to see a majority of what's in front of me because there's not going to be a bunch of sneaky stuff happening behind me. Whereas in PVP, you need to be very aware of your surroundings. So you might want to have this a little bit lower so you can get a little bit of a better gauge of what's coming up behind you. This is totally up to preference. I like to keep things central and I like to see things as wide as possible. All right, so when it comes to free camera, always have this enabled because what happens is this, you have your right click, and your left click. So when I'm running and I do my left click, I can freely move it. And then when I let go, it stays here. Whereas if I toggle off a free camera, when I go to do this again, I'm gonna move my camera with my left click, I'm gonna let go, and it automatically snaps back behind my character. What I like to do is I like to have complete control over everything. It might take a little bit getting used to if you're not used to it, but I always have my free camera enabled because it gives me that sort of flexibility. All right, here is the big thing. Combat slash movement. First thing I want to do is ground targeting. This is a big deal. Normal, if I have a ground target, 
like all these skills right here are ground target i'm going to click the skill once and i'm not holding anything down right now i'm not holding anything down and then i can click the skill letter or number again and it will place it whereas if i do fast with range indicator i'll click my keybind and i'll move my mouse and then I'll let go and then it places it instantly. That is very important for like higher tier fractals or raids or just any sort of like more fast paced combat. You wanna make sure that you have this on fast with range in indicator. If you have it on instant, basically what happens is it takes away that AOE indicator. You put your mouse somewhere and you press a button and it places it where your mouse is. And as you can see, there was no AOE indicator. So I would just have to know where my mouse is and be very accurate with that. So that's totally, up to preference if you are able to do that more power to you that's very awesome but i have to keep it on fast with range indicator one thing that's default is double tap to evade make sure to just take that off unless it's like something you've gotten comfortable with i personally find it very frustrating to deal with but you may not and that's totally fine in a majority of cases it can get to be an issue because if you were to accidentally waste a dodge from double tapping your movement key that's a pretty bad thing to happen in raids and game fractals or like any sort of like world versus world pvp or anything like that if you are a master of the double tap keep it but if you're not i highly recommend just untoggling it so that way you can set your keybind to it right click to attack or interact i personally take this off because uh one thing that i notice is happening sometimes is if i have it toggled on if i am fighting a group of ads and there is a boss or there's a bunch of targets i move my camera around a lot with my right click and sometimes it could double up and if I right click to move my camera on another target, it swaps my target. So I always de deactivate this because this is, I never use my right click to attack or interact anyway. So I always just deactivate that. Uh, auto targeting, I turn this off. This gives me complete control of what I'm hitting. So basically when I'm doing this, just keep in mind, I'm doing this to give myself complete control over my experience. So I deactivate auto targeting. Remote skill target, that is just to kind of help lock in your target. Melee attack assist, this is a pretty darn big one. So if you read it, it says, prevents you from running through your target so that you stay in melee attack range. Definitely keep this off. I, I know I keep saying this, but when you're doing like end game PVE, especially like player versus player, really any sort of like basically the farther you get into the game, the quicker you need to react and the more flexible you need to be. So you want to deactivate this because as you can see, I'm going to run towards my target and I'm not lifting off the W key. It stops me at max melee distance. So I need to make sure that I have this toggled off. That way I can run through the boss's hitbox because there's a lot of times where there's mechanics that you can save dodging for just by running through the hitbox. It is a huge, huge deal. You want to make sure that you have that sort of flexibility. So always keep melee attack assist toggled off. Lock ground target at maximum skill range. This is also a pretty big one. So as you can see, when I have this toggled off, which is default by the way, I can target all the way over here with an AOE that is maxed at 600 range. When I go past that 600 range mark, this thing turns red. So when I try and drop it, it says out of range right here at the top of my screen. Or I could toggle it on. I can have my cursor all the way over here at the top of the screen or whatever, but it locks at the maximum range. This is very, very helpful for using like travel skills really quick or just placing skills very quickly that you don't know where the, like if you want to benefit from the max range of a skill and you don't know where that max range is, this is very good. So I can basically say I'm like running into this target i can hold it at match for max range boom boom and then i can just engage really really quick and it just makes things very easy very very easy so i always have this toggled on okay so stop auto attacking on our on target change this is very helpful to keep untoggled because if i'm doing some auto attacks with like a range weapon or something like that and i swap targets i want to make sure that i keep auto attacking in most cases so i just leave that toggled off and when it comes to allow skill retargeting this is great because when i am using a channeled skill that says that does say maybe eight hits i could use four of those hits on one target and then target something else and it'll use the remaining four hits on that second target so this is helpful in something like open world where if you kill a trash mob really quick you can retarget to the new mob and it will kill them with the remainder of the skill so you can basically get maximum effectiveness out of your skills so that is all the general options everything else is kind of up to you i leave this this all pretty much on um default so now let's move on into the control options all right so kind of reiterating this again um this is not something that i've done before so i've never tackled a topic like this before because it's so personalized so it there's a lot that you can do here um that really uh makes your gameplay easier the main thing that i would say is you want to have one your key skills accessible 
too. Your big cooldown skills that are very important, but you maybe don't want a fat finger. You want to kind of add some sort of maybe like priority keybind to those. That way you, you have to think about using it. That is something that's helpful. I don't always do that, but it is something that is very, very helpful. And the other thing, and this is probably the most important thing when it comes to keybinds, is you want to make sure that you can keep your hand near your movement keys at all times. This is so, so important. As you can see here on my screen, my six through zero are changed to QFRGT. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to start recording my, my finger placement. That way you can actually see how my fingers work when I do different things. I have my normal WASD keys as my walking keys. My normal walking keys, as you can see, move forward is WASD. So this is forward, this is back, this is strafe left and strafe right. So this kind of goes into something that I've actually found in another Guild Wars 2 video. By default, you are set to turn left and turn right with your A and D key. Highly recommend just untoggling these unless you like do like role play kind of play or something like that. When you're talking about combat, highly recommend. There's never a reason that you would want to have your character turn while moving. You want to have it strafe left and strafe right. I definitely just take my turn left and default it to strafe left and then turn right, default it to strafe right. That is a huge, huge difference. And you will notice a massive difference just by doing that. My dodge is V, so I can basically just hit it with my thumb. That I believe is de uh, default. Uh, auto run, I think this is default on R, but I have that as one of my utilities. I rarely ever use auto run unless I'm like completely out of combat, not focusing. So I move, like that is something that I can move my hand for because I never use that in a combat scenario. So that's another thing to keep in mind. When you are trying to use keybinds for different like scenarios, like the some of the quality of life things like auto run, I don't use that in combat. So it's safe for me to place that somewhere on my keyboard that I lift either my left or hand, right hand off of wherever they are and toggle it because it's not going to impact anything if I'm not really doing anything that requires my reaction time. Auto run, I have it on my, as you can see, let me slide my keyboard over. I have it right here. And then I have my walk on my down arrow key because I'm never using walk or auto run in combat. Now when it comes to jump, and swim up, I just use spacebar, that is default. Uh, about face, this is a pretty important keybind that you may not have bound anywhere. I have mine bound on X. So I use this in very specific scenarios and I have it near my left hand. Uh, this would be good for either your left or right hand, but basically what happens is I could be running and then I about face and then my character instantly turns 180. So it's very, very helpful. I'm not going to do it too much because I don't want people to get dizzy that are watching the video. As you can see, that could be very, very helpful. Swap weapons. I have it on the default. I have my skills one through five on default. Here's where I change it up. So for my heal skill through my elite skill, I have my heal skill on Q. So I can just move up my left ring finger. I have my uh, utilities on FRGT. So FRGT. So basically what this allows me to do is um, I can just do ice razors, ire, I can do this skill, I can do this skill, and it allows me to just do it very, very quickly. As you can see, I can just easily access it without moving too far away from my movement keys. And also having my utility skill on the F key, like my home row keys, if you ever took any sort of typing class, you'll know that the home row keys, like when you type, your index finger should be on these little, uh, these little ticks on the F and the, what is it, J? Yes. So this kind of helps keep my my fingers in a like a, a point where I can reference them pretty quick. So if I use my utilities like this, I can kind of just roll my fingers really quick through my utilities if they're spammable like that. It just it's it's easy for me. It's easy for me to find my way back to my movement keys because I always need to have my left hand on my movement keys or near my movement keys so I can react if something is happening that I need to react to. My profession skills, I keep my F1 through 4 to the same spot because these are kind of like those high priority skills. My legend swap, F1, easy peasy. Uh, F2, these are high priority skills, but they have like a kind of long cooldown. So I can kind of squeeze them in when I need to. It's okay for me to like go and hit them really quick. It's no big deal. And then the big skill, boom, and it has a long cooldown. So I'm good to just keep that as it is. So when it comes to like engaging in this golem, I can basically do my heal skill, activate my utility skill, go in, and then I can do like a quick little rotation. And then you can kind of see how this all benefits really quick or really nicely because I just did a whole bunch of 
different skills in a small amount of time with minimal movement on my left hand. That is kind of the benefit there of keeping all of your immediate use skills and your very popular use skills very close to your movement skills. And then I have my profession skill five on E key because F5 is a little bit not easy to use. Like if I'm running, I play Holosmith, you run Soul Beast, Holosmith, or anything like a Druid or anything like that, um, your F5 skill is very commonly used. So even though it's a profession mechanic skill, this is very far away. This is a very awkward movement while I'm in the middle of combat. Like if I'm in a high intensity kind of situation. And so like with Hollow Smith, for instance, you have something called Hollow Forge, which is used very regularly. So I want to make sure that I can just pop on into Hollow Forge real quick, do my skills, pop out of it and treat it just like a normal utility skill. Uh, but the profession skill five, I keep that on E. Special action key. This is very important and ArenaNet is making this a very crucial key nowadays. Um, this is my special action key right now. You can see that it's dot dot dot. I have it on Alt Shift 1 and then I also have a gaming mouse which I will not show you because it is kind of stuck where it's at. So basically my gaming mouse has about five different keys that I use and one of them is this keybind for the special action key. That way I can use it with ease and I literally don't move my hand at all. So just to kind of give you a reference, this is kind of how I hold my mouse, just envision a mouse. My special action key is right here on my left thumb, like so. So I literally, I can move my mouse anywhere and special action key as I'm moving my hand. So that's very, very, very important because typically when you have a special action key skill, it is a crucial skill to use. So make sure you have that specifically to an accessible key because by default it is on your minus key which would require you to either take your hand off your mouse to do or your left hand all the way over here neither of which are convenient do not use that default unless your movement keys are like all over here or whatever uh, but find something that prevents you from having to lift either of your hands uh targeting alert targeting uh shift t i, I don't want to be like spamming different targets all the time because that's very annoying and not helpful so i try and do shift t so when i like or i just what is it shift t is that what i do what do i even do wow i don't even know my own key lines call target that's what i thought i was talking about i do use call target and everyone should get used to using call target very frequently so call target so i hold control and i click on my target or i just do control t but 10 times out of 10, pretty much, <laughs> I will do a uh, control and left click. So that is something that, like I said, I don't want to be spamming it. Like I don't want it to be like all on my left click. I don't want it to be all on my T key. I want to make sure that I have some sort of priority to it. So it has some weight to it. So I don't spam it. And so I don't mistakenly detarget all these other things. Like when I call target on the Jammertron, I want to make sure it stays on the Jammertron. I don't want to be hitting some, I don't want to fat finger something else and call target on something else. So kind of put some priority to that. Uh, take target. So if like, if I were to, you know, have the key bind for, or if I were to have the midi kitty, the medium kitty golem targeted, and then someone calls target on the Jammertron, I want to have a quick access key like H to take the target of what my ally has called target on. That is a very important uh, key bind to have accessible um, because there are going to be lots of target changes and different things. Uh, typically, when you target something, that is something that you want to prioritize in some fashion, whether it be beating it up really quick or avoiding it or whatever. So you want to be able to take target to see all the information, like what kind of boons they have, how much health does it have, does it have a defiance bar up? You want to be able to see that information pretty instantly. So let's see, nearest enemy. So, okay, this is targeting options. When you don't have a target or anything like that, it's very helpful to have uh, different targeting options. So um, let's just pretend that there's a whole bunch of ads here. I can tab target and it's going to take the medium kitty golem right here because this is just going to kind of cycle around uh, my field of view. I'm not, don't quote me on like everything here because I'm not 100% sure how tab cycle targeting works i don't know if it goes around your character or just around like your visible point of view but it'll just kind of cycle through targets whereas i also have the nearest enemy this is a very 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 helpful very helpful keybind to have i have this key bound on c so if i'm standing right here and i want to prioritize this target right here but there's a whole bunch of tiny ads if i were to do tab target it would just cycle through everything and I would have to wait until I get this target, which can be very frustrating. If I want to guarantee getting this target and it's hard to click on to get the target, I can just press C 
and it targets it right away. Even in a whole like pool of ads, I wanna be able to take that target very, very quick and then I can control T or control whatever my, whatever to call target on that target. Is very, this is a very helpful keybind to have. So let's go down to user interface. Rarely do I, like this is one of those things that I move off to my F5 and further keys because I never use those in combat. Rarely do I ever use them in combat. And if I do bring up a user interface, it's literally going to be static. Like my inventory, I'll bring it up and maybe I'll like shift it all the way down and keep it right here and I won't touch it. And I don't want to accidentally fat finger because like I have consumable items. So if I am going to try and use consumables while I'm doing fractals or dungeons or whatever, I wanna have access to this and I don't wanna accidentally hit my I key and close it. I, so I put it to F7 because I'm never going to use my F5 and higher skills during combat. Never, 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 unless there's some sort of super priority skill that I can keep in there, which I haven't found yet. So I make sure that I keep my user interface stuff on these F keys. So that's pretty self-explanatory. Camera, I okay, so the only option that I wanna go over here is look behind. So as we went over earlier, we talked about about face, where I turn my character and it's 180. So if I want to do look behind, it's very similar, but it doesn't turn your character. So when I press my Z key, it looks behind my character and I let go and my, I'm still running the same way. So I can look behind. This is especially useful in PVE or PVP or World vs. World. You can see what's happening. I can let go and I can react to whatever's happening and then turn my character and engage whatever content is going on. So, or whatever, in, in, in for, in for whatever scenario. There we go. English. Whatever scenario is going on, I can react to it appropriately. So look behind is a beneficial thing to keybind. Toggle action camera. This is um, this is a pretty helpful one as well. Having action camera, I kind of have mine on something. I accidentally fat fingered this a lot more than I would like to admit. You might want to like, you might want to have something that's a little bit more priority because I always like fat finger. Like I kind of just like rest my palm on control and sometimes I hit C and then I end up activating action camera on accident. I do use action camera in certain situations. But this is one of those things that you would kind of want to set up on a, um, like you're either playing an action camera or you're not. It's not one of those things that you really swap to on the fly a lot of the times, unless you are really optimizing your play for certain things. Chances are, if you optimize your play for certain things like that, you probably aren't watching this video anyway. Put some priority into this. You want to go into combat in one mode or the other most of the time. Uh, so having a keybind for that is very helpful so you can get in and get out. And then also if you accidentally go into it, which before I set up a keybind for, I've gone into it and I had no idea what the keybind was and trying to find it was a headache. So set up a personal keybind for this, maybe set up some sort of priority to it so you don't fat finger it and accidentally go into the, uh, the toggle action camera mode and then just find something that you can toggle it with. Mounts. Okay, so this looks like crazy. <laughs> this is not really like in combat, but this is something that I use very regularly. My mount key is my O key, which I've uh, remapped to one of my mouse keys. And so as you can see through all of my different keybinds, they all have O of some sort. And so when I am going to mount up, I literally just, like you can see kind of on my, on my, uh, my camera right here, I'll hold down shift and I'll hit my mouse key, or I'll go to control, hit my mouse key, or I'll do alt, hit my mouse key, or I'll do a mixture of those. Now this is something that I can kind of have like a little bit of flexibility with. If you use the uh, the radial mount add-on, you don't need this. I don't want to use that add-on because I don't want to have too many add-ons interacting with my game. Not that I'm like opposed to it. I just don't want to like have all these different things on my screen. That now I want to keep as many things in game as possible. I like to do that as much as possible. So if there were a DPS meter for like in game, I would use that, but there's not but there is a way to keybind using mounts. So that way I don't have to go and like manually change my mount all the time. So I just use my, my mouse key and then I hold down like shift, alt or control or a combination of these different things. And then sky scale, I do control B. Like that's totally up to preference. That's what I like to do personally. Miscellaneous, um, AOE loot and interact. So because I, your default interaction key is F as you can see right here, but I have that as one of my utility skills. So I have mine on B. So this is something that I kind of get used to. I would much rather have an easier time in combat than having an easier time out of combat in a game that is primarily focused on combat. So I want to make sure that my combat is set first and then I set my quality of life kind of like outside of combat after that. And so this is, like I said, this is a little bit interesting to get used to, but 
it's not too hard to get used to. Show enemy names, left control. So this is this is stuff like show ally names, enemy names. This is stuff that you would want to toggle, maybe have like an easy access like key to that. If you don't have it permanently showing, I rarely use those because I always have those things showing. Uh, stow and draw weapons. I just have this on my middle mouse key. Side note, this is a very, very important skill or very important uh, keybind to have because sometimes you will fat finger keys. So my skill four on my sword is a very strong skill. Sometimes I fat finger it. So if I want to cancel the cast, because you can see it has a 15 second cooldown, I can do it. I can stow my weapons and it goes on a cancel cooldown as opposed to a full cooldown. I can use it how I actually intended to use it. What like So I can cancel my fat finger and then I can reuse it how I actually wanted to. And that's a, especially helpful in PvP, but this isn't a PvP video, so I'm not really gonna go into that there. But it's very, very helpful. Build templates. This isn't something that you can use in combat, but this is something that I store to my number pad all the way on the right side of my keyboard. That was a little bit clunky, but whatever. I just kind of like keybind these like this so I can do my build templates like this one two three four five six and then i can do my equipment equipment templates by holding down control and then going through one two three four five six so whatever equipment i have for a build template i will link that to the same ebind as that build template and just do control on that template so it just kind of keeps things in line and that pretty much wraps everything up guys so i know that was a pretty lengthy video but this is a pretty big topic to kind of go over there's a lot of stuff that is just personal preference in this video you have to really spend some time on your keybinds i spent hours setting mine up ever since i found something that's comfortable i haven't messed with them too much like there's things that i'll add here and there like whenever there was a new mount released i would add in a new mount keybind or when the special action key was released i made a keybind for the special action key but a majority of my keybinds that i've remapped for like convenience have a lot to do with the stuff that I use very regularly. So I highly recommend spending some time and finding out what's comfortable because if you wanna get into more intense content, having stuff that prevents you from lifting your fingers off your movement keys makes things so much smoother. I guarantee you, if you can just kind of keep your hands placed, it just gives you so much more control. So I highly recommend spending some time figuring out what's comfortable and setting some sort of like priority into the skills that you use and then trying to emulate that priority through a keybind on your keyboard. Anyways, guys, that's the end of the video. As I mentioned earlier, if you would like to play Guild Wars 2 for free, or if you would like to buy an expansion, you can do so by checking out the link sponsored by ArenaNet in the video description. I also stream over on Twitch where I answer tons of questions. I do fractal trainings and all that good stuff over there. So make sure to follow me over there. My schedule can also be found over on Twitch as well. And lastly, if you like this video, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Once again, guys, I'm Rayo, and I'll see you next time. Take care.